Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to be looking at performing vulnerability scanning and analysis with OpenVAS. Now I did make a video, it is probably in this section in regards to installing OpenVAS. So what you can do is you can check that out first to make sure that you know how to install it and how to get it configured. Uh, if you do choose to use another vulnerability analysis tool, by all means go ahead. But the reason I'm using OpenVS is it's completely open source and has the functionality of paid or commercial, uh, commercial editions or commercial alternatives that exist out there like Nisus, for example. So uh, make sure you start the OpenVS service. You can do that by going into vulnerability analysis once you have it installed and configured and hitting on and clicking the OpenVS start service command right here, which will start it for you. And then you want to browse to your local host and you want to go to the port 9392. Now, of course, when you had configured it, it gave you a username and password. In this case, the username is admin and I changed my password for myself. So I'm going to log in. And uh, once it logs me in, I'll give you a brief uh, overview of the interface and I'll be showing you how to get a scan started up. All right, so we have logged in and the first thing that you'll see is it's uh, it's quite a, a good interface in terms of navigation. But the most important thing that you want to take a look at here is the refresh, uh, the refresh button that has a drop down that essentially allows you to auto refresh the page every 30 seconds, 60 seconds, two minutes and five minutes. For now, just make sure that is uh, on no auto refresh, because if you're not waiting for a scan to com uh, to complete, that may become really annoying. OK, so. On your dashboard, this is essentially, it will show you all the tasks by severity. I'll explain what a task is, uh, the tasks by status. Now, I've already performed a, a few tasks on my OpenVS uh, installation, and that's because I do use OpenVS for my work and other uh, and other types of projects. Uh, by here, uh, right down here, you have a graph that allows you to view the CVEs by creation time. Uh, the topology and uh, you have your NVT sorted by severity. So nothing really important there in regards to performing the scan. Uh, we are going to be taking a look at only the scans section here because the other section uh, is gets really advanced into uh, OpenVS. But as I mentioned, this course is not going to be targeted op at OpenVS. I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know uh, in regards to using OpenVS for uh, for performing vulnerability analysis. All right, so let's say we wanted to perform a scan on our Metasploitable 2 virtual machine. How would we do that? Well, it's really very simple. We would go into the scans tab and you want to go into your task, all right? So your task is essentially going to be your scan on the target. Uh, and it's going to ask you to go through a wizard. Uh, I, would, I would recommend not doing that because it uh, it actually does a lot for you and it really doesn't help you understand what's going on exactly. So what you want to do inside the tasks, um, inside the tasks, Page, you want to go to this little star here that uh, that brings up this little drop down menu that allows you to perform a new task or a new container task. You want to click on new task. All right, wait for that to load. And in here is where you specify your uh, your 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 targets. Now uh, I'm going to call this task Metasploit uh, Metasploitable Two uh, Scan. I'm just going to call it Metasploitable Two Scan. And now in your targets, you can see that Metasploitable Two Scan. And now in your targets, you can see that I already have a target. If this is your first time running this, you will not have a target. So what you want to do is you want to click on the star here to create a new target. And I'm going to call this Metasploitable2 like so. And uh, you can leave a comment in regards to uh, giving a description about it. You then specify the IP address of the target. In this case, it is 192.168.1.107. Okay. You can also specify hosts from a file that if you want to scan multi uh, multiple hosts uh, as for all the other settings do not touch anything else and just hit create all right and uh, make sure you've selected the targets now in here you can uh, go to the scanner here where it says open vs default if you want to perform a cve scan you can perform that as well but leave it as open vs default that will scan for vulnerabilities and will display them in terms of severity and what type of vulnerabilities they are how they can be exploited etc etc okay you then want to go into your scan configuration and this you can customize to whatever you want so you can set it to discovery discovery of services you can then perform a full and fast scan which is what is recommended full and very deep will go really in depth but this is more uh this is targeted at systems that are more secure but you're trying to find even the smallest type of vulnerability but for us the full and fast will suffice 
You then want to, you can then select your network source interface if you want to. And that's pretty much all the settings you need to do there. So once that's done, just hit create and we have created our scan. Now we need to initiate the scan. So give that a few seconds and you can see right under tasks here, you have your, the name or uh, the name of the task, the status here, the reports, the severity, the trend and actions. Now in terms of actions, you can see you can start the scan. Uh, you can, you, it'll tell you the status of the scan. You can delete the scan. You can move it to trash. You can edit it. Uh, you can clone it and you can save or export it. All right. So the, what we want to do is we want to start the scan. Now, mind you, depending on the amount of targets and depending on your target, this will take anywhere from two minutes to up to 10 to 20 minutes, uh, you know, given the intensity of the scan that you select. So just hit start. And now is when after it refreshes the page. Now, for the purpose of uh, knowing the status, because this status will be updated in terms of percentage. So you want to change this to auto refresh. So you can say refresh it every 30 seconds. And after every 30 seconds, it will auto refresh and it'll give you a status. So wait for this to complete to 100%. Let me just reload this here. And let's see uh, if it has started yet. So uh, just give it a few, sec uh, a few seconds or up to a minute to start it. You can see that it, it has requested the scan to be started. And I am currently running Metasploitable 2, so we know that the host is up. So give that a few seconds. So I can, let me just refresh that one more time just to see if, if it is started. Uh, I'll wait for it to start and then I'll wait for it to complete and then I'll get back to you. So, uh, let's just see if this will, um, will start anytime soon. It shouldn't take too much time. Again, it's all dependent on the intensity of the scan, the amount of targets you're scanning. Uh, and, uh, the, and uh, what options you select in terms of what uh, services or, uh, or CVEs you want to scan for. So really it's all about customizing what type of scan you want. So we'll wait for this, uh, to start. And, uh, once it's started, we'll wait for it to complete. As I said, this is going to be, uh, the status is going to be in the form of, a f of percentage. So all the way from 0% to 100%. And then it'll, in terms of reports, it'll give you here the total amount of vulnerabilities detected and the severity, the overall severity that this host or this uh, computer or this operating system is in dependent on the amount of vulnerabilities that it has. You'll see how important this is and why even using a vulnerability scanner like this is extremely important. And there we are. It's just started the scan now. So give that a few minutes and uh, I'll do that as well. So I'll come back to it. And all right. So the scan is complete. And as you can see, uh, you know, just what we expected uh, in terms of severity, it is complete high in the sense that the rating is from a 7.0 all the way to a 10.0. So we have a lot of vulnerabilities here. Now you can it'll display all this information in the form of a graph and pie charts, etc. Now we need to analyze the results that we've just gotten. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable the auto refresh because I don't need it to refresh now. And we want to go into the scans page and to get a detailed report of the vulnerabilities that were found, you can go into reports and I'll show you something really, really interesting here. Okay. So give that a few seconds to load up. And uh, once that loads up, uh, what's going to happen is it's going to give you a summary uh, of all uh, the vulnerabilities that, that were detected and it will sort it out in the order of severity. Now, for some reason, my, um, my, uh, my open VS, uh, has stopped working here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit my Metasploit. That is probably what's causing the issue because they are both, uh, hosted on localhost. And, uh, I am going to, uh, start up my service again. If you do encounter this, uh, issue, uh, please do note that you, sh you should try and avoid using uh, more than one application hosted on your local host. And the reason being is, is it, if it is being used, then you need to always uh, specify which one sh has the priority. All right. So right here in terms of reports, you can see it's, it's going to sort uh, the scan in terms of the date, the status, the task, the severity, and the scan results. Sorry about that. Let me just close that up and the scan results. So the scan results will display all the vulnerabilities. So for example, in terms of high, uh, high severity vulnerabilities, we have 20, medium 31, low 3, and you have your logs and false positives right there. Now, what if we wanted to analyze this, uh, uh, this scan and we wanted to see what vulnerabilities currently exist? So for, to do that, we would go into results, right? And we click on results and for some reason I have to log back in. So I'll log back in and uh yeah there we are all right so this uh, these are the results that uh it was able to to come up with in terms of vulnerabilities so the vulnerabilities here 
are sorted out in terms of their name, their severity, uh, their quality of uh, discovery, their host, their location, and when they were created. Okay, so when it comes to quality of de uh, detection, uh, this is uh, how how uh, this in terms of the percentage in which they are sorted, this is the potency in which they can be exploited through. So that means that, for example, in the ones that have a 99% quality of detection, that means that these are very, very prone to successful attacks. Okay, in terms of severity, you can see that it's sorted out from 1 all the way to a 10, uh, 1 being the lowest and 10 being the highest. And now in terms of the, uh, the vulnerabilities, we can see that, uh, let's look at some of the high ones. We have an SSH brute force login. So let's look at what this vulnerability is all about. So essentially, this is a vulnerability telling us that we can log in uh, it is it, we we can log in with default credentials via SSH. So immediately you can see that uh, it's telling us what vulnerabilities exist. And if we try and use this as our as our attack vector, we can easily access the uh, the the Metasploitable two virtual machine through SSH without even exploiting it. So you can see that the default uh, username is user, and there you are. Uh, and it will also give you, the great thing is it will give you uh, the uh, mitigation in which you can put in place. And it's telling me here to mitigate this attack, change the default password as soon as possible for SSH. Okay, so let's go back and let's analyze a few of the other vulnerabilities that we'll be looking at exploiting in the exploitation section. Uh, we have a dist cc remote uh, code execution vulnerability. Let, let's take a look at that. So it is possible to execute the ID command. Uh, so what service is this targeting? Let's let's take a look and let's see what service it's targeting. So this is probably targeting the Samba uh, server. If we just take a look, there we are. So it also gives you CVE details. And in regards to the mitigation, it doesn't have anything here. And we'll be looking at all, how to exploit all of these services. So there we are. We have a remote code execution vulnerability through the port 3632, which is Samba. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, one more before we uh, actually show you something else. Um, yeah, VSFTBD, uh, the backdoor vulnerability. So let's click on that and let's see what vulnerability this is. So as you can see, vulnerability, uh, this attack can exploit this issue to execute arbitrary commands in the context of the application. So essentially allows command execution and the, uh, the affected software is VSFTPD 2.3.4. We already know that. All right. So, so some quite, uh, quite some valuable information has been gathered here. What do we need to do now? Well, what if we wanted to, if we are to go into reports here and, uh, in reports, just let that load up. For some reason, my, uh, OpenVS is really, really slow today. I do apologize for that. Uh, there we are. So now in here, if I was to just, if you, if, if I was to just go on to this scan and I click on the date right here, which is essentially the scan, uh, itself and let, let that load again. Uh, apologies for the delay. And there we are. It looks like it's loaded it. All right. Excellent. So now in terms of, uh, the, the results, you can go ahead and look at all the, uh, the vulnerabilities that exist now completely on the entire web server that it was able to detect and they are sorted out in terms of their severity. Fantastic. So now from here, you can see that uh, we can export this data and we can actually import it into Metasploit. How do we do that? Well, we can click on the format that we want to uh, export it into, which I always recommend as XML. That is the format that is supported and is most favor uh, favored by the Metasploit framework console. So you now want to click on the download filtered report there and just let that download, give that a few seconds. It should prompt you to download it. All right, so I'm gonna save the file and uh, that name is long, but I'll show you, you can use the text com completion to, to get that right. All right, so now that we're done with OpenVS, we can now uh, start the Metasploit console, the Metasploit framework console. So I'm gonna open that up right now and we'll wait for that to load. And then I'll show you how to import, uh, I'll show you how to import the report and how to access the vulnerabilities through Metasploit so that you can have an easier time when performing the exploitation. Okay, so let the Metasploit framework start up, give that a few seconds, and uh, then we're going to be using the db import command. And finally, we'll specify the uh, the uh, the report file. So we use the db import command, and then after that, we specify the location. In my, in my case, it is in my downloads folder, and it is called the report, and I can use the auto completion and once I hit enter, it should uh, import the OpenVS XML data. As you can see, it's going to import all that data that we required. 
and now what we need to do is we can we can we can run uh, additional commands so for example if i type in hosts as you remember it will display all the hosts you've ever scanned and the ones that you've imported you can then run one additional command which will display all the vulnerabilities that you have imported so if i type in volumes and i hit enter these are all the vulnerabilities that were able to be detected and you have the cve codes right over there so that you can uh, you can start uh, using this information uh, in regards to exploitation so that was how to perform vulnerability analysis on your target and get a detailed report and understanding of what of what uh, vulnerabilities exist on your target and how to exploit them how to mitigate them etc etc this is extremely important on both sides of the uh, of the fence whether you're a white hat or a black hat it all com uh, comes down to understanding what uh, uh, what a what the operating system is and how it is configured with all the different services that being said that's going to be it for this video and i'll be seeing you in the next section when we'll get started with exploitation.